Postcards from Beyond Written and narrated by Paul Harris Life is perfect as it is. You gently close the gate behind you and set out along the little track that winds around the crest of the hill. The path is lined on either side by a multitude of long grasses and colourful wild flowers and you walk beneath an archway made of the overhanging branches of a blossoming blackthorn tree. The mind is quiet and serene, and the body feels light and relaxed. There are no problems, no life issues crowd the mind, and there are no riddles to be solved. Everything is perfect, just as it is. The world is very beautiful this morning. Last night's rain has cleaned the air, and the whole panorama appears crisp, clear and bright. Everything sparkles in the early morning light. Gazing out across to the forests on the other side of the valley, you notice the beautiful vivid green colour that spring growth has given the leaves and marvel at the play of shadow and light on the treetops. In the valley below, a train clatters past. You see a narrow boat, lazily chugging its way along the canal, and joggers on the towpath are chatting to one another as they run. Such activities in no way disturb the mind or spoil the view. The hustle and bustle of life is neither accepted nor rejected, but simply enveloped in the infinite peace and stillness, just part and parcel of all that is. The mind is quiet at that moment precisely because of the lack of value judgment and comparison. All is right as it is. There is no resistance. There is no should or should not. The track leads you down the hill towards the little stone bridge that crosses the canal. In a hedgerow nearby, blackbirds are singing sweetly, and a jackdaw, sitting on a telegraph pole, lets out a throaty call, flaps its wings, and takes smoothly to the air. The warmth of the sun touches the back of your neck, and from nowhere a most delicate rapture arises filling every fibre of your being with love and contentment. Life is perfect as it is. It does not require any change to make it perfect. It is perfect right now. There is an awesome quietness within every experience. Even the most chaotic of situations are contained within a most profound stillness. In every experience, behind everything else, there is an exquisite silence. It makes no difference if it's during a meeting at work, being caught up in the rush hour traffic, sitting at home watching the television, during a barroom brawl, being lost in a foreign city, making love or tending to a dying relative. Life is inherently simple, self-explanatory and harmonious. What complicates matters and makes a sore trial of life is the psychological white noise of forever wanting things to be different. And wishing life to be different means never noticing the stillness that resides at the heart of it all. Perfection is what is left whenever the white noise of resistance is absent. Change is inevitable, experiences come and go, but this perfect quietitude remains. It is not a thing in itself. You cannot own it. It cannot be labelled or pigeonholed or pointed to, and it will not conform to any perception ascribed to it. Even to express it as stillness or silence is to misconceive it. It is so subtle 
that to even look for it is to deny its existence. Despite this, however, it remains eminently discoverable, and once you have truly apprehended it, you know that it is the only truly real thing there is, and the existence of anything else is mere appearance at best. To suggest that life is perfect is a very dangerous idea. The vast majority of people do not experience life as being perfect and would likely take exception to being told it was. The evidence of suffering is all around us, whose lives have not been touched with the anguish of serious illness or bereavement. What about the wars and violence, the greed and corruption? the poverty, hunger and injustice, not to mention the earthquakes, tsunamis and other natural disasters. Outwardly there is so much evidence of life's apparent imperfection, how could it be said to be perfect? The perception of life as being all wrong is also reflected inwardly. So much of the time it can feel as though there is an invisible barrier between oneself and the world, and a painful dislocation from the peace, happiness and success to which we aspire. Most of our time and energy, consequently, is spent in trying to bridge the perceived gap between how life appears and how we think it ought to be. How deeply the human mind is conflicted. After so many thousands of years of intelligent existence, our basic psychological condition has changed little. The many forms of neurosis to which human beings are prone still exist. States such as greed, hatred, confusion, fear, worry, loneliness and depression. Psychologically, we are mostly anywhere but contentedly enjoying life here and now. In place of stillness, we know only disquiet. This is not to say that life cannot provide us with pleasure and relative happiness. It most certainly can. With varying degrees of success, we all manipulate life to give us an approximation of what we really want. We've produced a multitude of belief systems and philosophies to explain our condition and which offer us solace, hope and a way of managing our doubts and uncertainties. We have fashioned countless ways to entertain and distract ourselves via the arts, sport, technology and the like. It's true that we are clever, cultured and creative. No matter, however, what we design and produce, no matter how much we consume, whenever we stop, inevitably, we are confronted with restlessness, fear and dissatisfaction. The human condition is one of constant motion, forever searching, finding, possessing and losing, over and over again. Yet there is something beyond the ceaseless flow of time, space and activity. There is a deep, profound stillness that persists amidst the ever-changing flux of conscious experience. And, when it is discovered, you know intuitively that it is what everyone is really looking for. It is, if you will, the universal goal of peace and contentment to which each of us aspires. It is always present and its discovery is never denied is. But it's subtle and hard to see. This means it's most often just simply ignored, covered over by the incessant and slavish need to make life different than it is. There are, however, rare occasions when life affords us a tantalising glimpse of the very perfection we seek. Perhaps we are absorbed in a beautiful piece of music, or something completely unexpected happens. And, at such times, 
there is a temporary suspension of our habitual thought processes and neurotic preoccupations. A sense of timelessness becomes apparent, and with it a comprehension of how simple life can be and of how effortlessly everything happens. What was previously overlooked as being too ordinary and familiar is now seen in a new, mysterious and beautiful light. It feels as though everything is in its rightful place, and there is a deep sense of familiarity, as if being reunited with a long-forgotten friend. Such experiences cannot last. Once over, many simply return to their usual habitual preoccupations, and the event is not regarded as significant and easily forgotten. For others, the accompanying feelings of benevolence, love, and a subtle yet glorious rapture leave a deep impression and are so intense that they can change the entire course of a person's life. For the apparent loss of that profound connection creates a deep yearning to rediscover it. Two and a half thousand years ago, an Indian sage by the name of Siddhartha Gautama realised this true stillness that lies at the heart of life. He discovered it through the spontaneous ending of all psychological becoming and searching. He abandoned all passionate desire for life to be different and, instead, remaining mindful, self-possessed and free from all bias, he gave his unqualified attention to observing life as it occurred in real time, moment by moment, and simply watched. And what did he find? Life, he discovered, is perfect as it is. Henceforth, Gotama became known as the Buddha, which means awakened one. He realised that it's through not understanding how life works that creates all the resistance that causes suffering. With his enlightenment, the murk of ignorance had been dispelled and all suffering had ceased for him and could never now return. He was finally at peace. He called this perfect stillness Nibbana and maintained that it is the highest happiness to which anyone can aspire. The Buddha never claimed to be the first or only person to have discovered Nibbāna. What differentiates Gotama from others was his ability to create an effective teaching, whereby anyone can, with proper application, arrive at that same realisation. He likened Nibbāna to an ancient city and suggested that what he had done was to rediscover the lost path that led to it. He knew that Nibbana is what all beings are trying so hard to find, and out of compassion for suffering humanity, he showed the way to discover it. Time, dedication, and much in the way of personal development is required to eradicate that perpetual white noise of dissatisfaction, for its roots run ever so deep. Once, however, our inner demons have been overcome, once we are truly no longer craving for life to be different than it is, and have given up all attachment to the things of the world, then there is nothing to prevent the total comprehension of the exquisite peace and perfection of Nibbana. <laughs>